My name is Greta Berishite and I am a coach for high value women or high value women coach. How to be a woman of high value and bring out the best in our men, in your men. So in your man, I should say. So ladies, today's topic is, do men find powerful and intimidating women really attractive? And you will hear the answer in a bit, um, because first I'm actually going to do a high value woman Q&A. And this question popped up, I think it's a question number five or something. And uh, yeah, I'll answer it soon. So do men find powerful and intimidating women attractive? It is crazy. Like when I saw this question, I was like, wow, um, very, very, very good question. And uh, I was like, I have to do a live about it. Actually, it's really cool. Hello, everyone who's watching. It's so good to see you. I actually haven't done a live for, I think, over a month now on my YouTube channel. So funny enough i'm actually feeling a bit nervous and i think you can see that already <laughs> right uh, it's so crazy i've been doing this for like six years and you don't do a live for one month on your youtube channel and you can actually get nervous but anyway i'm seeing all your comments i'm seeing all your questions and i'm actually fine now so here we go let's just start <laughs> um so what i'm gonna do ladies i will I'm answering my YouTube channel, the community questions, and I will start from the beginning, right? And I'll answer all the questions. And the question that I got the most intrigued by, I think it's actually the question number, it's the last question in there by Auguri. And I just, I really, really love this question. So I can't wait to answer it. Um, I feel like powerful woman. Oh, let me just see. What are you girls saying here? Okay, somebody can somebody make a comment or like a dot, anything like that, so the comments can pop up again. Or maybe I just need to press. Oh, you agree? Let me see. I feel powerful women rarely find love. Okay, I can't wait to talk about this. So let's start. So ladies, for the ones that are coming on new, this is High Value Women Q&A. Post your questions. I hope you like my hair, g fangs to bought it, <laughs> as you well know. And um, I'm going to start with the questions. So the first one, good afternoon, Greta, I hope you're well. Question, we went on a date, but I feel like he's pulling back, not pursuing. I'm still interested. How should I navigate this? Ladies, when a guy asks you out and you go on a date and he lets you go because he's not interested, you let it go. You don't navigate anything. If he's not interested in you, you let it go. It's not good enough for you. The only man that you should be interested in are the ones that are highly interested in you. And then from the guys who are highly interested in you, you pick the one you like, okay? Don't think that you can seduce, charm, pursue, manipulate, do some kind of magic on him to get to him, right? Like, no, ladies, like a man is a pursuer, a man, he is the one who needs to find his wife, right? His girl, etc. So he needs to be interested in you to come after you. If he's not interested, you let it go. You need to learn, ladies, that not everyone will like you. And when guys come on dates, not all men go on dates because they like you. A lot of men go on dates to actually practice their strategies, to practice their tips with you, to practice how to be with other women, right? How to be with women that we actually like. So he might go on a date with you and he might be charming and he might be watching your reaction and how you respond to his charms. And then he might be putting notes in his head thinking like, oh, this is good. When I say that, she's smiling. When I do this, she likes it. When I take her to this restaurant, it's a good spot. You know, I'll make sure the girl I actually really like, I'm going to apply these tips to 
you know, so don't, you know, when you go on a date with a guy and he's actually really, really charming, you will find out did he actually like you or not the next time if he asks you out again. So the way I date, right, the way I go on a date, I go on a date, I have fun, I enjoy the moment, right? But only if he texts me again and asks me out, this is when I know that, okay, he's kind of into me, or at least he wants to see me again and let's see what happens. You know, or a lot of times when we really into you, we actually ask you out for the next day, for the next date on the same date for the next date on the same date, right? So they're like, oh, we, you know, what do you, when do you want to meet again? You know, so that is when you know. Until then, no matter how much you like him, no matter are your legs are shaking, are your hands are shaking, like, are you feeling all the butterflies? None of this matters. If he's not into you, you let it go. Like, don't, don't even consider it. You kind of have to, I think, go on the dates with no expectations. Learn how to go on the dates with no expectations. Um, you know, ladies, even if I'm, let's say, going on a date with a guy that I'm just like, you know, you just look at him and you're like falling over heels for him, I still go on a date, enjoy the date. And when I leave the date, I think to myself, if it's the first and the last date or the first and last time I see this Mr. Perfect, right? I'm so grateful for it because it did happen. You know, the date happened. He charmed me. I had fun. And if he's going to happen again and I go on that second date, I'm so grateful because the date happened. He charmed me. I had fun. Right. I don't think like, wow, now we're going to get married. We're going to have 10 kids. This is what the wedding will look like. I don't think about that. You know, obviously don't date men that don't kind of like fulfill your standards or expectations, but like date men that kind of fall into that category that, you know, have standards when you go with guides on a date. But once you Go on a date with that guy that fits your standard. Don't have expectations on that date. Because when you have expectations, you get disappointed. You'll, you'll always get disappointed because the guy will never fulfill them. You know, like when you have your expectations will be too big. You'll be expecting this. He will do this. Or actually, it's really good to have low expectations. When you have low expectations, when he literally blows you off your feet. You know, so have your standards. At the same time, have your standards. Don't have your expectations too low either because then it's like, it's a bit ridiculous. But if your expectations are too low, if he's offering you something that's too low, you don't even go on a date with him, right? Did that make sense? Okay, I see lots of comments. Uh, low expectations like coffee date. Ladies, I would go for a coffee date. And saying this, the last time I've been on a coffee date was probably 10 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I would go on a coffee date if I was 25. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just teasing you all. No, I would still go on a coffee date. You know, it's like a quick, if it's the first time you're seeing a guy and he's like not far and all of that, you can go on a coffee date. You know, it's fine, like half an hour. Thank you for the $5, Lady Queen. I've seen you around forever. Five years, I think you've been following me if I'm right, right? Maybe less, a tiny bit less. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, I think... If it's from online dating, you can't expect too much, to be honest, you know, and I've been on the dates where it's just a walk, saying that when it's just a walk in a park, usually I don't see that person again, um, but um, yeah, I think, I think when it's something from online dating, you don't want to kind of be stuck with dinner. Because you go for dinner 
and then you don't like the person and then you have to be stuck with them for like two hours it's it's too painful you know <laughs> it's too painful and then you kind of want to run away and you think oh, anyway it's just like you know so i think something like a drink like a coffee or a drink or you know like you can arrange to go the way it usually goes with guys right what i noticed we usually offer you let's go for a drink and then we see you they like you you like them and that drink becomes into free course meal all paid and him charming you the whole time this is usually how it goes so this is how it was like this is what my kind of like let's go for a drink dates would go like in london right if you meet for a drink then there is no pressure because you can after that drink you can go like okay i have to go home like i have plans blah blah right you don't have to go home you give like a couple hours for that date just in case it goes right if it goes wrong you give an excuse oh it was i thought it's just one drink and you disappear right but so you go for that drink and you like him he likes you and then he goes like oh he sees you he talks to you for literally two minutes that's how much he can see like are you worth dinner or not right and then he's like okay do you want to go to this place are you hungry and you're like yeah i'm a bit hungry okay i know the nice place and then your drink date ends up being into amazing dinner date you know that's that's why i kind of like be open go for that drink date and see what happens at the same time sometimes you go for a drink date and you don't even get the drink and you get and you end up being going like you end up going for a walk for hours and he doesn't even offer you anything <laughs> and then you go home and you're like okay do you have manners like you know so try it out you never know like be open especially with somebody that you don't know like where it's gonna go what he's like do you like him not like him be a bit more open and then you know you can the first dates are kind of like you know it can be weird anyway so like just don't have expectation um right how to move forward how to move things forward with a guy friend also how to create uncertainty if you see him every day because of his job he is pursuing but talk for a while when seeing definitely a connection but he also just recently ended a relationship how to stay high value but recognize if he is interested okay so you are bonding with a guy friend at work and um right so i think the key with guy friends is have a bond with them have fun with them right but don't show your interest as a woman would be showing interest to a man right so guy friends um i kind of don't want to say from my experience because it's just going to be personal but i will say it because it does happen quite a lot so with guy friends the way the way it kind of goes right okay from my own experience um when you are bonding with a person and when you're yourself with a person and then you're kind of bold as in you're straightforward you're happy you're technically being yourself and he is being himself and you guys are bonding if you're not the one pursuing him and you're slightly like not really interested in him because when you're not really interested in him that is when you're more like open and you're more like bold and you're more like cheeky and fun because you don't really care what he thinks but he's so much fun right this is when we start to fall for you and the more you t the more time you spend together the more jokes there are the more bonding it is that is when we just kind of keep falling for you so i think in the meantime when you're off work hours let him be the one texting you first like doing all of that stuff right 
only text him first if you have like let's say some kind of joke going on and something funny happened and you know that he would like really crack up right so like text him first like um if something like this happens right but don't be like texting a guy first a guy friend first when it's like hi how are you how was your day blah 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 right um thank you for 50 pound 50 dollars that really distracted me <laughs> but like it's good it's good i'll answer your question for sure but like i was just like oh <laughs> so you know let like um hold on sorry just that pink 50 dollars kind of just went like poof um let so when you're with a guy friend still like don't be like how was your day don't show interest from that side right be like still like kind of playful banter but let him be the one kind of pursue you and the by the pursuit i mean just kind of message and call you so let him be the one pursue you as a friend saying this because if you guys are friend and he, friends and he's inviting you to places as a friend and you guys already really know each other you have a bond and so on and you feel comfortable with him and you know that he doesn't think that you're into him you can invite him to places too here and there just make sure that he does it more okay i think when things can go really wrong with guy friends is when you are the one telling him that you like him that's when you can really shut everything up um everything down so just make sure that you're not the one even if you're developing feelings for him do everything in your power to stay really really cool and to continue that same connection that you have with him without showing or hinting to him that you're into him you know and uh let if anything kind of step back a bit and be a bit more feminine and let him to invite invite you to places more text you more call you more be nice and friendly and the same like banter and stuff like that but don't be the one doing these moves and to be honest like the most amazing relationships really happen from like good friendships and uh you know i think that's like fantastic relationship you know like a potential for fantastic relationship if you play your cards right even though i hate the saying and it's okay it's not even playing your cards right it just was at the tip of my of my tongue but it's more like it's if you're being feminine if you're letting him pursue you you know every man wants a woman that he needs to come after guys who say that we don't want a woman that we need to come after are the ones that want an ego stroke or somebody to worship them rather than a real girlfriend okay right so let me see that 50 dollars question <laughs> how important is that let's see or maybe it's not a question for most men we look for fit for most men we look for fit feminine oh most most men look for fit feminine and attractive women educated career driven and successful does not matter to most men women date down the more successful the less options she has because most men are average yes and no yes and no we'll get to this we will get to this okay next question um how to show enough interest without crossing the line into accidentally chasing by smiling enjoying he asks you out to go on a date with him and you're having fun yeah i thought about kevin as well <laughs> when i read that um you know uh just by having fun having fun with him when you're smiling when you're happy he can read you you're happy with the guy who's charming you he knows you're interested what else does he need to know that's it you know he's like you make a joke you both laugh you keep an eye contact here and there he touches you you don't move away his hand he gives you a hug you don't step back he holds your hand you don't take it out 
you know, like he knows that's interest. You're like, you're responding. You're not, you know, he stands closer. You don't step back unless you're playing a little game, <laughs> you know, like, you know, then that's it. That's it. That's how you show interest by being there when he's pursuing you. Yes, yes, meow to to purr. I will reply to you. <laughs> um let me see. Meow. Purr purr. How can I tell my guy friend at work that I'm not interested? Okay, you're just being funny. You're just being funny. Just start to ignore him a bit. But saying that if you will start ignoring him a bit, he might get more interested because depending on what type of guy he is <laughs> if he's kind of like more like okay when she ignores me i'm gonna pursue her you might dig yourself a hole um the easiest way would be like look i'm so into you i want marriage and 10, ten children right now i'm sure he's gonna run to the you know to the other side of the office and will never talk to you again but at the same time you don't really want to put desperate on your forehead at work, right? <laughs> so um yeah, just ignore it. Um okay, I will read I will read as many questions as I can. Um let's see next one. Greta, you are amazing. I'm grateful and happy because I have found your channel how to express gratitude to a man who spoils his girlfriend because he hates the words thank you. Is there any sentences examples? Wow, that's lovely. Okay, so I had this conversation in my VIP actually. So the way it is, I think it's a bit of cultural differences. So for example, my cousin, who is Lithuanian, right? And maybe he's watching, maybe his girlfriend is watching, I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. Um, so my cousin, he, when he gives, let's say, when he spoils, let's say his girlfriend, I think all she needs to do is just say thanks or just smile. That's about it. Literally, that's about it. If she would be like, oh, thank you so much. Like, give me a big hug, a kiss. Like, you know, all of ages would be like, this is too much. I'm taking my present away. It's too much. You know, your mom, it's just too much, right? So I think that maybe like Eastern European men, it would be like, thank you. And be just happy. Or they just put a smile on your face and you're just more than happy that you're smiling because he can see that you're happy, right? That I think that guys in UK, you kind of need to show a bit of appreciation depending on what type of guy he is. Because if you just smile, he might pick on you that you're ungrateful or not grateful enough. You know, so I think you kind of, it's a bit cultural. The, poli the politeness and the manners can be a little bit cultural. So just kind of, I think, observe how it is in your own culture. That's what I would do. Because I know with some guys, I would just smile and that's it. With some guys, I would be like, oh, that's so cute. Thank you so much. You know, so it's like nearly the opposite thing. So it's just cultural. Um, I think just to be safe in the beginning, you can always say thank you and observe how he responds to it. If he doesn't respond good, maybe just a smile on your face is more than enough for him. You know, because a lot of men, if they are, if they were brought up by, let's say, you know, kind of like in the more old fashioned way, in the more right way, right? Uh, they're just going to see their generosity, something that is normal. And it's like something that we kind of have to do anyway, or something that we do anyway. So we may not be expecting too many thank yous from you. Uh, but other guys, if they are never generous, if they always split the bill and they are always selfish and tight and timid, you know, when he gives you something, he might be expecting like, you know, you jumping up and down and like being all over the moon happy, over the moon happy, you know, so it kind of, it just depends a little bit. 
Um, in the beginning, I would just be grateful. And then I would just observe every action, like what type of guy he is. And then you just kind of adjust. How do you communicate with a guy by text who really doesn't say much, but he asks questions about your day? I think this is literally the most boring question you can ask. <laughs> but saying this, girls do like questions about their day. And I get a lot of clients who complain that he didn't ask me how my day is and how do I get him to ask me more how my day is. Uh, to me personally, this is very boring. I can't stand questions like that. Um, but a lot of people do. <laughs> so anyway, how do you respond? I would give a short response, like it was fine, or depending how close you are to the guy. So in whichever case, I wouldn't say more than four lines. If something really important happened during that day, I would maybe give like five lines. If nothing really important happened, my reply would be maybe one line, two lines. You know, I think that um, texting, you kind of have to mirror each other. Because if he's texting you like this much and you're texting him this much, you're showing a lot, a lot of interest. And it's just, it's just, you're, you're just not matching, you know? So it's kind of mirror each other through text, through text messages. And if he wants to know more, he needs to call you or take you out and you guys can talk about it properly. You know, so how was your day? It was great, thanks. How was yours? A bit boring, but like, you know, or as I said, like if you guys are chatters, you talkers, you like to text, then actually he would be texting you like an essay and then you can reply with a little bit of a shorter essay. Um, some people like to text. Don't over text though, because when you over text, there's nothing to talk about on a phone or when you guys meet up in real life. Okay, and here we are coming to my favorite question. <laughs> Who is ready for that favorite question, which is, I uh, love your sense of humor, sends me. <laughs> Thank you. Answer us, should, um, should you tell a man that you appreciate them verbally? Um, I really appreciate you. If he's really nice and he has done something really nice for you, yes, of course. Of course. Uh, but he would like really have to kind of go out of his way and be consistently good to you for you to actually say something like that. Like, don't use big words for nothing. You know, use big words if they actually did something good. So when he hears that, he, he values it. You know, because if you're going to be like dropping compliments here and there, they like they lose value. But when you say like, thank you, or I appreciate you, or that was great, or this or that, then we have so much more value. My sister actually done a video on that. Uh, she bloody never gives compliments. So when she says it, you know, like the guy is like appreciating it a lot. Um, okay. So here comes that question. I love this. What does it mean when a guy clearly likes you a lot but he's not chasing me. Instead of chasing me, he is ignoring me. Then I even show slightest interest, that's so ridiculous. When I was talking to him in person, he used to get nervous and not look me in the eye and say to me, I'm very intimidating. So I'm gonna take this question a bit out of context because I want to, <laughs> and it's my YouTube channel, right? And um, so the out of context, do men like women they are intimidated by? And um, this is very tricky. This is very tricky. If men liked women they are intimidated by, then I would have 
thousands of men chasing me like crazy. And it's not the case for some reason, you know, like it's not the case. For some reason, I don't tell guys what I do. I let them to get to know me much more so we don't feel intimidated too much once we find out what I actually do, right? So when I date, I hide what I do Uh, or I say like, I'm a life coach. I help women. I empower women, right? And then I'm like, okay, what do you do? And it's all about him. Because if I say I'm a relationship coach and I, you know, I tell girls how to handle manipulation and games so you can't play her, he's going to be like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. (laughs) My hands will be sweaty. You'll be like, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Oh, my parking is finishing. Yeah. So I'll, I'll call you later. Yeah. So... The answer is um, when you are doing something or you're working or you're more like in a powerful position or you're intimidating to men, um, majority of men are not, they're not going to like that because like in actually many ways you can come across very masculine and we can feel insecure, very insecure. Um, There is that 1% that likes it, literally like the 1% that would like it. So when men are like, when you have a powerful position and you come across a bit intimidating, only to men that are very high value and very, very strong and powerful, we're going to like that. We're going to see you more as a challenge. And we're just going to look at you like, no, she's still a woman. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go further than her. You know, so we're we going to be like, no, this girl, like, I'm, I'm going to get her. There is no way she can intimidate me. She's still a woman. So... So to that 1%, they're going to get intrigued and they're going to come after you. But out of that 100, it's going to be that 1%. You know, so the reason, the reason I'm doing what I do is because um, the only guys I dated in the past was the 1% anyway. So... I know that when I meet up with guys, majority will be intimidated by me and will freak out and run away, right? But the 1% will get intrigued and will see me as a challenge. You know, so for me, I didn't lose anything, but only because I was, I relate to that one, let's, I wouldn't call it 1%, I would just say confident men, you know, like I relate to that. But, um, but like, let me give you an example, right? Before I was doing this channel, right? Uh, before I was a relationship coach, you go on dates, 95% will call you and ask you out because they would see me as feminine. They would see me as sweet, as cute. Oh, Greta, you know, she's so cute. She's so sweet. She's like, so feminine and gentle and blah, blah, and blah, blah. And I usually let guys take the lead and all of that, you know, so I come across like soft. So, you know, like 95% of guys would come after me. And um, some I would date, some I would dump, some I would friend zone. So I would be still interested in that 1% out of that 95, right? But I would know that 95 are attracted to me, so it would make me feel good, right? Because I have all these options, even though I'm not interested in these options, I still have all these options. So it's like, it made me feel good, right? Now, then I'm a relationship coach, it's actually all these options are out. Like, they automatically are out, because like, I can't, 
you know, like we, we, we look at my YouTube videos and we can see like, okay, this sweet, cute, like uh, feminine, blah, blah, girl, uh, she's got another side to her, you know? So like only that 1% would stay. So I'm not losing anything. If anything I'm losing is like a bit of an ego stroke, to be honest. So it's, so if you think that a guy looked at you or a guy knows what you do and he says to you, look, I'm intimidated by you and he doesn't keep an eye contact and so on, it doesn't mean that he fancies you. He could, it could actually be that he's, he's not that into you and don't show him any kind of interest. If he wants any kind of interest from you, he needs to get over his intimidation and come off to you. You know? Um, that's what it is. You know, that's how it is. I think it's just how it is. Um, some men like it, majority don't. But I think this is kind of a problem nowadays with guys anyway. Um, I think from my experience and just from like seeing things around me, I would say that guys, if they were raised correctly, you know, and they would use their full potential as in their masculinity and, you know, their brain and everything, they should not be intimidated by any woman. She's powerful or not. And I might sound like sexist here, and I'm sorry, but um, by nature, right, men are faster, they are stronger, right? Um, I play basketball, I played basketball with guys. You can't compare a guy's and a girl's game. A guy is faster, a guy is stronger, um, I think guys are a bit sharper. I think they are faster thinkers. Um, maybe it's just my experience. Maybe I'm a bit of a slow thinker. I don't know. But in my I think personally men are faster thinkers. Uh, they are very competitive. Uh, they are, you know, if they would use their full potential, I think men would be like going much faster than women anyway, and they would overtake majority of women. But the problem nowadays is that men don't use their full potential, you know, and women do. Women really use their full potential to achieve things that we achieve, you know, and um, is it right? Mm. I'm a little bit, to be honest, I'm a bit more skeptic. Before, when I started my YouTube channel, like a couple years ago, I was really like um, pushing women, have your dreams, have your goals, create an empire, all of this, all of that. Now I'm a little bit more like just be a woman and be feminine because you're not a man. And to run a business, to run an empire, <laughs> to you know to do what men do so naturally is five times harder for a woman than it is to a man why because we don't have as much as testosterone as men do and um we can just handle much less you know like i think yeah and it's from my experience as well like you know it's like you can keep going and you can keep pushing and pushing and pushing and running and running and running. And a couple of years later, you're burned out. You know, uh, there as a man can keep going and going and going and going for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and he's not burned out and he's still happy and he's still climbing up because he's still full of energy because he's bloody exploding with testosterone. You're a woman, you know. So I think men are nowadays intimidated by powerful women. But if they were real men, they should not be. Unfortunately, we have a lot of weak, insecure, 
uh, men who are not going for their full potential. Here we go. <laughs> In your face. <laughs> right. So nice to talk to yourself. No one, you know, like debates. <laughs> I don't agree. Women are amazing and can handle empire. Well, are you running your own empire? Do you have a business that you're running? How many years have you been running your business? How are you running your business? Try working 14 hours a day for five years and then tell me that you can still run your empire without feeling drained or, you know, that you're still bursting with testosterone. I used to be called a machine three years ago. My friends would be like, Greta, you're a machine. I remember I went to USA and with my friend and I'm like, this thing isn't doing my business and all of that. I'd be like, Greta, you're a machine. Well, <laughs> that machine has a limit. You know, when it comes to a man, he's a machine for longer, much, much longer. Because if you compare testosterone levels, they are incomparable. <clears throat> In your mind, yeah. I did answer that the fifty dollars question. Meow to two per. Um, are we nervous if we make a little bit of more money than we do? I think because a man technically should well, a man's love need is um a man's love need is uh, admiration, right? So Think about it like this. If you're making, like, if he's making less money than you do, depending on what type of job he's doing and so on, but let's say you're running a business and let's say he's got some boring nine to five, right? And let's say he's running, he's making less money than you do then how are you going to admire him? You can't admire him because you're kind of in front of him. You're a couple steps ahead of him, right? So you can't admire the guy. So if you can't admire the guy, you don't fulfill his love need, right? So he doesn't feel happy. And uh, he, he, he does not fulfill your love need because as a woman, you women like safety and security. You will get a safety and security from, from a man, of course, if he's, you know, fit, strong, blah, blah. And, but also if he's, if he's got money, you know, if he can look after you, if he can look after your children, you know, that's how you're going to feel safety and security. So if he's, if he's not giving you safety and security, he's not fulfilling your love needs, so you're not that happy. And, um, uh, if he's earning less, you can't admire him and he's not that happy because you're not fulfilling his love need, which is admiration. So that's kind of, you know, that's the problem. How to admire the guy? I love the subject. Okay, admiration. It's quite simple, ladies. I think it happens automatically. Like, if, like, it's really simple it's it's really simple and it's very tricky so it's a bit i would say to keep the right balance with it it can come across a bit gamey but that's kind of what works okay so ideally a man should be in front of you he should be ahead of you right and then, um, okay, so I'm watching this right now, the suits, right? The suits, the, you know, the series, and I'm like addicted. And um, let's say he's a lawyer, you're his secretary, right? Um, so you admire him because he's a lawyer, right? And he's smarter and all of that. And he's running the firm and stuff like that. You're his secretary, right? but you're not um, a doormat, right? So let's say you admire him. So you go to him for advice if you need it. You go to him for help. 
she helps you out, you're grateful, you're thankful, oh, you saved my day, you saved my life, whatever, right? But when he starts to pick on you or when he's telling you to jump um, or when he starts to take you, like, or when he starts to kind of test your boundaries or take you for granted, you stand up for yourself. You're like, uh-uh, not that easy. You know, I'm going home now. You sort the files yourself. You know, you show your boundaries. So this is kind of like a perfect example of like a good relationship. You know, like he's, you admire him. So he automatically gets admiration. And it doesn't, you don't even need to say, I admire you. The whole relationship shows it like facts speak louder, you know, actions speak louder. What's there speaks for itself. But at the same time, and he's giving you safety and security because he's, let's say, running the firm, he takes care of you, all of that. But at the same time, uh, him not being able to walk all over you, you having your boundaries in place and being a bit cheeky and fun, you know, it's, it works, you know, it works. These type of relationships kind of work the best. You know, so you get to be feminine, you get to be in your zone, you get safety and security from a man, you know how to set in boundaries and so on. But problem that these relationships happen, then this type of guy gets really controlling and you let him get controlling. So he goes like, you jump and you jump, you do this and you like change your dress, you change your dress. Um, I don't like your hair this way, you change your hair this way. He uh, pushes you, you cry, you know, like he tells you to do something. You, you like, you know, when you're constantly pleasing, when you're mothering, when you don't have your dignity, when you don't have your self-respect, you know, that's when he starts losing attraction for you. But when you kind of show a bit of admiration and then he's kind of like, oh, I think she likes me. Hmm, let me see, like, can I walk all over her? And you're like, uh-uh. He's like, oh, she's feisty, you know, and that's kind of like um, a simple example. And I know it's annoying that today's world, because um, on the other hand, you know, like, I don't want to inspire you ladies to be like secretaries and like, let the man like rule the world and blah, blah. It's, it's kind of, it's not the thing to do, you know. Like, I do want you to go for your goals and dreams and build empires and so on. I'm, I'm building my empire, you know. I'm like, I can help so many people out. I can look after so many people because of building my empire, you know. So I would never say, like, um, don't build your empire because you're going to have, because more men will be intimidated by, you know, build it. Like, look after people, help you know, it's, it's more like real men are not going to be intimidated by you, you know, but I suppose, I suppose every type of situation has pros, uh, pros and cons. I think that's how you say it. And I think there is no way out, you know, and you kind of just have to think for yourself, you know, does that make sense? But, but, but high value, like high value doesn't have any pros and cons. When you're high value, you're winning. You're good. Guys like you, they love you. They'll do anything for you. When it comes to empire or secretary, mm, your choice. <laughs> um, advice, everyone. Yeah. Cool. Nice shout out John Gray. Estrogen and testosterone. Uh I would say shout out to Bible. <laughs> That's what I would say. Shout out to God. You know what I ladies I want to finish with? I'm gonna finish with something really nice, in my opinion. Wow. So, um, you know, um, one of the clients said to me, so she's a Christian. So if you're not Christian, 
like I'm sorry just listen <laughs> just listen to me um you know so her husband no her boyfriend kept telling her but um in Christianity it says that a woman should submit to a man right and he says you're not submitting to me and he was bullying her and being nasty to her and you know not treating her right and accusing her of that in Christianity you must submit to your husband it says it like in, in the New Testament and you must submit and I basically said to her you need to read the New Testament yourself and be able to stand up yourself to him and what it actually says in New Testament it says Jesus says to a man first of all to love oops to love a woman like a Christ loved a church he was the he was willing to die for her so first of all a woman is a gift your ladies are a gift from God to a man so when he's like putting himself first or is that thinks that he's a king and he's putting himself on a pedestal first of all you are a gift <laughs> to a man from God so you better know your value and worth second a man needs to love his wife like Christ loved the church he was willing to die for her so he must love you so much that he would be willing to die for you and um, it also says that a man needs to love a woman as much as he loves himself so when a guy tells you submit to him honey i'll submit to you anytime if you're willing to die for me if you're willing to love me as much as christ loved the church and um, if you're gonna love me as you love yourself so this is what i want to finish with <laughs> okay so ladies don't settle for less have your standards and remember how valuable you are and most important you are a gift and don't forget that okay so i'll leave you with that thank you so much for watching kisses from dorset if you want one-on-one -on -one, i'll put all the links in the youtube channel i have videos you know how to stay attracted via text where I'm talking about mirroring and how what your messages should be like and so on. Um, what's the other one? How to get your ex back, how to love yourself, uh, how to control your emotions, you know, all that jazz. All those um, videos will be in the uh, video description box below. Thank you so much. Lots of love. And uh, I was pretty nervous in the beginning because I didn't do a live for a while on YouTube channel. And you girls like, thank you for being there for me. Kisses. Have a good day. Oh, how does it? Okay. This happened before. And this is so funny. The X to finish the live does not work. So now, okay, let's, let's just give it a, a try. Okay, so... You're welcome, ladies. I'm trying to press the X and it's actually like stuck. Does it mean I'm going to be on this live forever? Please, like seriously, YouTube, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, YouTube. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi. Yes, take care, everyone. I just wish I could press the X to... Oh. Here we go. Kisses, ladies. Love you loads.